What's happening? My name is Elsie Williams, and I am in San Diego, California. And hold on a second while I situate this, this video camera. It's a little lopsided right now. Hi, can you see me okay? Excuse me, please. I'm in San Diego, California. I mean, I'm spending the day today going through some odds and ends, tying up loose ends. And the reason why I'm making this video... Excuse me, I'm eating lunch right now, and it's not settling with me very well. Anyways... I'm in San Diego, California, and it's Memorial Day weekend, and as a result of it being Memorial Day weekend, I have three precious days that I can take for myself in order to be able to tie up loose ends concerning personal property uh, and just do things that I need to do in order to be able to not only take care of myself, but also to filter through older audio files. Actually, what I was doing was trying to listen to some old Jesse Ventura uh, conspiracy theory shows uh, that I... Uh, uh, I tape the audio of the videos from YouTube offline so I can listen to them at a later date. Excuse me for a second, please. And I'm eating my lunch. And uh, I do apologize for eating while I'm talking to you, but sometimes I have to make videos when the opportunity arises. As a result of going through this digital tape recorder right here and filtering through audio files in order to try and find the Jesse Ventura files, I stumbled across an audio file that was made on November 6, 2013 at 9.23 a.m. Now, an incident occurred. It's, uh, it's me being on a um, UCSD bus shuttle trying to find an SIO or something like that library that at that time had um, their um, website online showed that they had either that or a, a somewhat web page that was online showed I looked up to see how many libraries were on university campus because I was being harassed and gang stalked like you would not believe in their biomedical library. Now, you can easily go to Google and type. You can easily go to Google and type in organized stalking and or gang stalking in universities, and look at how many responses you get. And pay attention to the blogs you you read concerning it. You can also go to Google and type in organized stalking and or gang stalking in public libraries. Now, as a result of being harassed in the biomedical library and inside Club Med, which is a restaurant that's right up the path from the biomedical library as a re on UCSD campus, between May 23rd, 2011 and November, uh, no, May 23rd, 2012 and November 13th, 2012, on a daily basis, every single time I was on that campus, everywhere, bus stops, club med restaurant, bathrooms, uh, the biomedical library, cigarette breaks. So what I did was, was I basically did what I've been doing concerning the exact same harassment that is perpetrated towards me for me to experience along all my routes. Because in organized stalking, gang stalking expeditions, they basically operate on the same templates of methods and tactics against every target. They deviate sometimes just a little bit, but they're mostly 98% of the time the same. And one of the methods and tactics that they utilize towards targets is sensitization. And sensitization is where they will sensitize the target to words, phrases, or physical gestures, and even sounds, okay? And sometimes even specific acts, like getting around a target and spitting or purposely bumping into them, uh, to, uh, purposely bumping into the target. They don't do that with me, but... They do engage in what is known as anchored physical gestures for me to witness on a daily basis everywhere I go, and direct conversation methods, where that is that tactic is what they do, is they sensitize the target to specific words or phrases. Then, as they're having a conversation on their phone or with each other around the target, they'll interject those words and phrases within the conversation that they're having. And you can tell 98% of the time that these words and phrases don't even belong in the conversation that they're having. So, I was making anonymous complaints online to uh, UCSC Campus Safety. Um, the, uh, the harassment escalated, which is almost hard to believe that it could because it was just so prevalent, it was just crazy. So, what I was doing was periodically I was sending them um, anonymous they weren't anonymous because my name was on them, but they didn't know me by name, okay? Because I'm not—I wasn't a student there. But I was using their library uh, services for research purposes, um, and um, for exposure purposes. And I was being gaslighted by biomedical library staff, 
uh, including the staff that works in the back office behind the biomedical library counter by people that were coming in acting as students and by other individuals who were using it and by other individuals who were using a computer some of them being homeless people I could tell some of the people they were using weren't students because of the type of belongings that they were bringing in with them they were getting around me these people that I just mentioned to you were getting around me including sitting at the counter saying gang stalker gang stalking oh my god and then engaging also in the physical gestures now so what I do is in response to the harassment I experience everywhere I go which is the same exact harassment everywhere I go because all this harassment is crafted and expedited as a result of a government official or a government employee having a power position in the community using what is known as the community notification. And as a result of tracking and surveillance of a target, they're able to place this organized crafted harassment around the target everywhere a target goes. Businesses, libraries, public libraries, university libraries, every place they go. That's what organized stalking, gang stalking is about. And if you don't believe me, you can go to YouTube and type in gang stalking bullying on steroids. It's a news broadcast concerning an individual in Santa Cruz. And uh, I believe that was made around fe February or March of 2011. He flat out states in the news broadcast he is harassed everywhere he goes, even including his own home. So what I did was I developed strategies in reference to predicting what they might do before they do it. Okay. And, uh, like, uh, if I, like, say if I'm sitting in front of a computer and I gotta get up to go to the bathroom, I'll make a discreet statement in my tape recorder that's attached to a pouch on my undergarments on my chest with the microphone right below the neck collar. So all I gotta do is bend over my head, cover up my mouth, and make an extremely discreet statement about where I'm going and what I, what I might hear as a result of going to where I'm going and then getting to where I'm going. So what I do is I predict what I'm gonna hear along my routes. Now this is... After, something happened, I forgot exactly what it was on 11.05.2012 in the biomedical library, but it prompted me to want to try and maybe start using the other libraries, like the uh, uh, Geisel Library, I think it's either the Geisel or the Galipsy Library, and then I discovered that there was other libraries that were on their campus, and I looked one up the day before on the 5th on their computers, so I, I decided on the 6th, as soon as I got on campus, I just go ahead and take their shuttle service to this specific type of uh, library. It was called SIO or SCO or SIO or whatever. And you hear me asking the USD bus driver, because USD has their own shuttle services, just like um, UCSD does, just like USD did. So basically, this audio file, what they do is get around me and say, gang stalker, gang stalking, oh my god, weird, crazy, gang stalker, gang stalking, gang stalk, stalk, stalker, gang stalking, oh my god, weird, crazy, gang stalker, gang stalking, gang stalk, constantly along all my routes, or on specific days, they'll just say it intermittently. And so what I do is I predict what I'm going to hear before I, he before I get to an environment that I'm going to, and I'll predict what I, I'm going to hear once I get to that environment before I leave to go to that environment, on digital audio files and video files. Now, I was, I was already making complaints online to the campus safety that I was being harassed uh, by biomedical library staff, other staff, students, okay, and, and uh, I think I might have mentioned in one of them, Club Med. Club Med harassment is already online. You can go to YouTube and type in, I think it's Learning Disabled Woman Exposes UCSD Club Med or UCSD Restaurant. And I just uploaded actually a, a, a video two days ago concerning how I went to Club Med for the first time since November 13th, since November 12th, 2012, okay? That was the last time I had been to Club Med restaurant, which is right up the pathway from the Biomedical Library on UCSD campus for the, uh, on March, uh, on uh, May 16th, 2013, for the first time since, May, uh, since November 12th, 2012. Okay, and caught that same exact tactic being utilized again uh, towards me for me to hear, even after I predicted it the morning uh, uh, in the morning before I even left to get on the bus to go there. In fact, going there was actually something that it was actually a, a spur of the moment thought because I missed uh, I didn't miss my bus. I got to the bus stop and there was already two bikes on the bus, which meant that I couldn't put my bike on the bus. So I went to UCSD and I was just going to go there and kill some time at the bus stop. See if I could catch some direct conversation methods going on around me there. I got there and I said, well, I'll just go to Club Med instead of waiting 45 minutes for the next bus to come. And that's what I did. And as I was locking on my bike, I clearly stated, let's see if I hear gang stalker, gang stalking, gang stalk, oh my God, we're crazy, or gang stalk, gang stalking, just like that or separately once I get in there. And as soon as I opened up the door, gang stalking, oh my God, was said. 
I didn't even, the door wasn't even closed yet. And so that happened, I got, I had, I generated about four separate short audio files from that entire visit because I sat there and drank a Mountain Dew for about 15 minutes, about 15, 20 minutes, and then I got up and left. And um, so I uploaded that audio file to video about three days ago and uploaded it to the internet. And then on that same video that I made concerning that audio file, I also uploaded an audio file from, because I, no, see, what I did was I uploaded it on May 19th, 2013, and then uploaded it on May 20th. And when I was making that video in reference to me uploading that audio from May 16th, in the same audio file, I got out a, a separate digital tape recorder that was dedicated to a year prior. In other words, I made this video concerning uploading the audio from May 16th, 2013 concerning the Club Med restaurant on UCSD. And in that same video, that that audio file from May 16th, 2013 at UCSD Club Med restaurant, I also uploaded another audio file. And that audio file was dedicated to May 19th, 2012. The day all this occurred was on May 19th, 2013. And the May 19th, 2012 audio file showed the same exact tactic being utilized against me in the same exact way. To a T, hang on a second. To a T on the Green Line trolley. Okay, one full year later, the same exact tactic being caught in two different places. So what I'm about ready to do right now is show you an audio file from exactly, uh, oh crap, the tape recorder just shut itself off. When, you don't, when you're not playing an audio file or recording, like for a matter of, I think after five minutes it shuts itself off. So while it's booting back on, I'm going to take a bite of my sandwich. Alright, so here it is, and this is from November 6, 2012 on UCSD shuttle service, okay, at 9.23 a.m. You can see November 6, 2012, and I'm going to turn it on. You can clearly hear that it's US, UCSD shuttle service because of the questions I'm asking. Now, what you got to pay attention to, it's, it's, said, it's said more than once, but as soon as I press play, you're going to hear it. You're going to hear gang stalker or gang stalk being said. Just listen closely. And I'm pressing play right now. When I get off at this bus, this come, when we get off at the mirror, uh, the mirror, right? I'm trying to get to the SIO library. SIO library? Yeah. Wait, SIO doesn't go through here. Are you serious? Yeah, it doesn't take this stuff anymore. So where do I go? Um, what do I get? Does anybody need this stuff? Yeah. Because I, I got on the shuttle as a result of shuttle inf driver information, and now that I get where I'm going, I'm told that it's the wrong, it's the wrong bus. What's your Yeah, it's the SIO route. Oh, ah, I see. So where do I, where do I gotta go in order to get to the SIO library? Okay, that's 
stopper right there. Yeah. The SIO. Uh huh. It's gonna go back to Peterson. Uh huh. It gets to Peterson. Stay on the bus. And when it gets to Peterson, stay on the bus. So yeah. basically, why am I using Peterson as a landmark if I'm gonna stay on the bus? Because the route goes in a loop. And so what happens then? It's gonna. What you're gonna do is I'm gonna take that bus right there. So you stay on the SIO. And then it's going to go in a loop, and then it's going to go over to the, where you want to go. All right, so I just talked to that bus driver, right? Yeah. All right, let me get my bike. All right. Hey, do you guys know what time the SIO shuttle comes? Ain't that a bitch.
Do you know how to get to the SIO library? Yeah, going the other way. Yeah. Okay, you're the way down. Hey, somebody left their skateboard on the bus. It's fine, it's fine. Oh. Okay, sorry about that. I was watching my birds play. Now that was uh that was uh UCSD shuttle on November 6, 2000 uh 2012 and 7 days later they pulled a big event between campus safety they slashed my tires which provoked me to call campus safety uh, campus safety directly. And I've already made videos concerning that. You know, these universities are uh, are going to use their connections downtown to discredit the truth I'm exposing. And you better believe that the district attorney's office is going to stick up for these universities because of what's attached to gangs talking, human trafficking. I'm in San Diego, California. My name is Leslie Williams. I have undisputably proven that this crime is occurring towards me in San Diego, and I'm not getting no help because of the institutions and the public libraries and the businesses that they're protecting. That they're who's using them? Who's managing this gang stalking, organized stalking, harassment for me to experience? And who's protecting it? Why won't they make a police report concerning it? I'm in San Diego, California. My name is Leslie Williams. I make these videos to inform, to expose the truth concerning the factual realities that they had the audacity to literally initiate this campaign against me when I arrived here on August 8, 2011, and I'm still in experience in it today, and I have every day from August 11th, I mean August 8, 2011, up to this very date, May 25th, 2013. Every single day along all of my routes not make one police report concerning it. I'm in San Diego, California. My name is Leslie Williams, and all you have to do is ask yourself why. Thank you.